Okay, we're back. We're live. It's Monday morning. It's 12 noon, 12 o'clock rock with Mina Morita, former chair of the um, PUC and now energy dynamics consultant and Marco Mangelsdorf, the CEO of uh, ProVision Solar and also Hawaii Island Energy Co-op. Welcome to your show, you guys, on a Monday at noon. What do you say? Good morning. Greetings from the uh, the People's Republic of uh, Santa Cruz, California, Mina and Jay. Hello there. <laughs> and they, they have <laughs> Skype and telephones there. Wonderful. <laughs> and I'm still on Kauai. <laughs> okay, all right. Where would you rather be? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, we were, you know, hardly couldn't notice uh, that uh, electric cars, especially Tesla, have been in the news. Um, Marco found a, an article uh, about a $300, $300 million line of credit that Deutsche Bank apparently uh, has given uh, to Tesla uh, in order to, um, you know, make it possible for Tesla to market its, its sedan, its new sedan. And they're going to go on a big marketing campaign and the $300 million will give them the cash they need to uh, finance and lease finance those cars which is um, all the rage. I mean, financing cars is all the rage these days. So that's, that's one thing. Um, th then, of course, um, there's been some articles in the news about uh, the new software that's being rolled out by Elon Musk and, and Tesla. Um, and that's going to that's gonna make it much safer for drivers to drive. It's, it's not automated, but it's on the way to automate it. And I, well, my guess is that it, it will lead there soon. Uh, and in the morning paper, there was a pro and con on whether electric vehicles in general um, were, you know, going to be the next great thing or what, and what the barriers were and what the pros and cons were. That was interesting. Anyway, it seems like we should talk about, we should talk about um, Tesla, which has one um, showroom in Ala Moana, which I saw yesterday, really beautiful cars. Um, and I understand they're, they're building another one um, in the Howard Hughes uh, area, Victoria Ward, um, near the theaters there on Oahe Street, they're building another one. So I don't know if we'll wind up with two, but we certainly, for the moment, looks like we might have two uh, Tesla showrooms. So, so anyway, so comments on Tesla and electric vehicles. Uh, where are we going? What, what uh, of this information appeals to you? Well, not, not necessarily Tesla vehicles, but electric vehicles in, in um, general. I think it's really important that um, um, they be considered because we need to look at ways to grow loads. Um, you know, over the years, the load has been declining, and we can't bring in all this new renewable generation unless we grow our load. So this is definitely one area um, where there's an opportunity. Yeah. yeah, I would I would echo Mina's comments as well, Jay. I believe that by having more electric vehicles, uh, number one, it would reduce the percentage or the amount of fossil fuels as in liquid petroleum that the state brings in for the transportation sector, which is, of course, substantial. Uh, as long as it's uh, paired with uh, more PV, whether it's rooftop PV or commercial PV or, or utility PV, that... Uh, we're, we're seeing more and more, our, our four utilities are seeing more and more that there is uh, often can be a surplus of solar power during the midday hours when loads are typically lower, and this would be a perfect time and a perfect combination to use that excess or uh, PV power to be able to charge up uh, the EV batteries. I mean, but we're, we're a long ways away from having any type of volume, I think, of electric vehicles. I mean, it doesn't, you don't go from one to 10,000 to 100,000 overnight, certainly, but I mean, clearly the costs have to come down, right? I mean, I was been driving here in the San Francisco Bay Area and I've driven by a number of these beautiful X series, Tesla X series, which are kind of the hybrid looking uh, SUV vehicles. And I'm thinking, God, it must be fun to drive one of those. But I mean, right now you have to, you have to be very, uh, well-compensated individual in terms of the salary to be able to afford that. So if and when Mr. Musk can hit the $30,000 range uh, that he's touting sometime uh, supposedly next year, I mean, that'll be that'll be a very big thing to be able to get electric vehicles down to the 
thirty and sub thirty thousand dollar range, and also have the required two hundred plus uh, mile worth of range. I mean, that 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 will be a very important thing for the state of Hawaii when we get there. Yeah, and, and, yeah, I, it, and I heard this was one of the big manufacturers has already got two hundred mile range. I forget which one it was. The car came out recently. And so we're, we're already in a, in a place where range anxiety is no longer that big a concern. You were going to say, Mina? Well, I, and I think the other big um, challenge for Hawaii is, you know, we like our trucks. <laughs> so they have to come up with a, a good truck. Well, maybe not so much on Oahu, but definitely on the neighbor island, we like our trucks. I don't know why, but this reminds me, when I was a kid riding a bicycle, we used to take a clothespin and put a playing card so it hit the spokes. So it, it sounded like a motorcycle. It had a clickety-clack sound because bicycles are silent. Well, I can, I can see an electric car coming along which has a, you know, macho, en macho engine sound, even though it doesn't make any noise. <laughs> you think that would help sell electric cars? <laughs> no, I think it would help sell, it would help sell those. Uh, and, and, you know, I hadn't even thought of that. You're absolutely right. I mean, we've got a... Due to the ag sugarcane uh, vestiges, and of course ag is still going on, I mean, we've got uh, a very kind of powerful uh, icon for a lot of folks in the islands and the rural areas. And it's their, their big, beefy, either four typically, or, or DOS diesel trucks with this deep, deep baritone uh, rumble. So I think you're onto something, Jay. You come up with an electric. <laughs> <laughs> well, a playing card, card. Well, card attached to the wheel. Yeah. Well, have, have, and, no, and have, have, the, have Go ahead. Well, well, one of the, you know, several months ago, I wrote this blog about um, um, heated toilet seats in Japan. I mean, or um, the, 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 um, <laughs> the, the upgraded toilet in, in Japan. And they account for 7% of um, a homeowner's electricity use. Whoa, wow. So, you know, that's I mean, a real waste. It's actually, right. <laughs> I mean, we have to think out of the box on how to grow load. <laughs> that sounds funny, but but Ooh, you know, I heard that. <laughs> as, as, as these toilet seats get more ubiquitous, I mean, you know, definitely that's another area where you you you, you know we have to look at <laughs> in all these unlikely places where you can have electricity use. Yeah, well, I mean, if the whole thing is, seems to me a, a natural kind of marriage. Uh, that is solar on your roof. Maybe you bought too much solar, you don't really need solar, and now with self-supply, you're not going to have the option of selling it back to the utility. What do you do with it? Well, you can put it in your car. And, um, you know, there's a natural, prog it's a natural progression. Those two things work together pretty well. So you, you, uh, you, load, you load your car up, you, you charge your car at night. It's wonderful for extra uh, extra power from the PV. Um, you have a car that is, um, hopefully they're going to get cheaper and hopefully the range will stay over 200 miles uh, for a cheap uh, electric car. And, um, and, and they w I think they're going to build them in a way so that they will take automated software as we go down the pike. I mean, I th clearly that's what Elon Musk is doing. He's building them so that today's software can get better and better and the car can take uh, upgrades. It, you know, it has it has the, you know, the, the the physical the physical attributes to take the upgrades in the software. And soon enough, the same car you bought today, which has a certain amount of, um, you know, what do you call it, security software, road safety software, will also have software that to to make automated. And I think the last part of that formula is these cars will not be sold. I think his three hundred million dollar line of credit for Deutsche Bank is a, a sign of the times. It, it, he's going to market these on a lease basis the way so many cars are marketed today. So you, like a cell phone, you know, you sign up and you pay a monthly charge. Um, and maybe you pay something up front, but you uh, uh, essentially pay a monthly charge. Then the question really to my mind is how, if at all, should the government incentivize these cars? Because this is the way of the future. People are going to want these really bad. The more automated they get, the more excited people are going to have. And, and if you already have PV, you're going to get very excited about it. What do you think, you guys? Are you ready for doing that? I'm, I have mixed feelings, guys. I have really mixed feelings. And I'll tell you why. It's because, and, and I fully admit that my business, my solar business over the past 16 years, has benefited greatly 
greatly from government incentives, federal and state tax credits. But then I look at the state of solar today, and and I'm really kind of asking myself some profound, at least profound to me, profound existential questions regarding how important is it that solar be profitable. What I mean by that is that if you look at some of the major players across the United States, even across the world, uh, it's hard to find a lot of profitability out there, despite despite the very, very substantial and long-term or long-running uh, federal uh, and state uh, government incentives, i.e. Uh, Solar City, for example, has been around for 10 years, 10 years, and they have not been profitable one single year out of the 10 years, and now it looks, you know, as they're in play, so to speak, in terms of possibly being purchased by, by Tesla, uh, the question is, you know, how, does solar need to be profitable? Do electric vehicle companies need to be profitable? And if, if, they, if they don't, are they deserving of, of government support, and how much government support should they be getting? I mean... But to kind of bring it back home to Hawaii, so we have an announcement over the past couple of weeks that we have, what, a record budget surplus of a billion dollars, of course, which brings all kinds of people clamoring for, of course, very valid and, and heartwarming ways to spend it. But ultimately, this is money that comes out of all of our pockets, right? So you know, I don't really have an answer to my philosophical question because it's easier to pose that question than to, to answer it. So I'll, I'll shut up. Okay, well, your question, the question you dealt with was whether we should have incentives. But I think what I heard in there was the implication that incentives or not, people are going to want these electric cars. These electric cars are ultimately safer. These electric cars will ultimately, uh, you know, modify, um, um, ameliorate the, the congestion on the highway because they move efficiently around. Um, they could be a big thing for Hawaii if we, if we adopt them. Of course, any state could stop, you know, electric cars. It ultimately is a state regulation kind of thing. I don't, I, you know, even if the federal government likes electric cars, the state's going to wind up regulating the highways, regulating the licensing, and so forth. I, I know you have a lot of thoughts, Mina, and I want to hear them, especially about the incentives. But let's take a short break, if you don't mind. When we come back, we're going to hear from Mina Morita on exactly what should be done with electric vehicles going forward. Such a promising possibility. We'll be right back. Aloha. I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. I also have a blog of the same name at kawilucas.com where you can see all of my past shows. Join me this Friday and every Friday at 3 p.m. Aloha. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on thinktechhawaii.com. I hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. to discover what's likable about science. Looking to energize your Friday afternoon? Tune in to Stand the Energy Man at 12 noon. Aloha Friday here on Think Tech Hoi. Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to Abachi Talk. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm your co-host. And we have a nice program here every Friday at 1 o'clock uh, on Think Tech Studios where we talk about technology and we have a little bit of fun with it. So join us if you can. Thanks. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live with Mina Morita and Marco Mangelsdorf. Um, talking about um, Tesla, uh, setting new standards for electric vehicles and electric vehicles in general. And we left, uh, we, you know, we were on a, cliff, a cliffhanger with Mina Morita because we wanted to hear what she had to say about the future of uh, electric vehicles and, and the uh, policy points around um, a resumption of uh, uh, tax credits here in Hawaii. What do you think? Well, I, you know, I think we have to look at the whole transportation issue differently because you know, if we're just looking at adding more electric cars, we're, we're not facing up to the biggest problem that we have in Hawaii, which is traffic congestion. And, and so, um, you know, I don't think the future is going to be just how do we get electric cars on the road, but, you know, how do we resolve our transportation problem in general? And it, it's going to be a... Um, multi-prong um, uh, approach uh, with, with a bigger picture of alleviating traffic congestion with cleaner vehicles. Mm. And, and so I think, you know, we need to be 
sort of reframing the issue for everybody um, and and kind of painting the what the picture could look could, could be like and and so one is you know the electrification of public transportation in general you know more electric buses more electric shuttle vehicles um, so anywhere you're you're moving um, greater amounts of people you know how do you get that electrified um, yeah, I mean, I, absolutely, I think electric buses has got to be part of the package. Um, nice that uh, one of those manufacturers is going to make electric trucks. I hope that happens soon, um, especially for yeah. the Hawaii market. Electric buses, we need more of that. And we need a lot of buses. Yeah. And that's, that's the multimodal one that, uh, that I relate to. I, I don't have any confidence that the government is going to make bike paths all around. This could be the best place in the universe for bike paths. But, you know, we, we do bike paths by not doing bike paths. The same thing with pedestrian walkways. Uh, we don't mm -hmm. really, we don't take care of our hiking trails. We don't build setbacks. We build concrete edifices like in Kaka'ako where you really can't walk. Um, everybody yeah. drives to Alamoana Shopping Center and they see concrete all around them. It's like being in this huge concrete jungle. Um, there's no, and, and walking is very hard. So I'm thinking yeah. that if you talk about multimodal, you're really talking about more kinds of electric vehicles. That's the reality of it. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you know, I think, you know, it's not only incentives that we have to look at. It's what, what are the disincentives to using, you know, um, larger vehicles in Hawaii, and how do we more appropriately scale <laughs> the uh, transportation for, you know, the right types of uses? Um, and, and then we have to get creative. Um, you know, one of the things that I saw on the Big Island years ago, at, I think it was at the Mauna Lani, was, you know, solar panels on, on electric golf carts and mm. having them charged up that way. <laughs> and my understanding was that the golfers like them because they're a little bit more peppier. So, you know... I, I, What's the inventory of golf carts out there that can use um, a solar charge on them during, or get them charged up during during the day? Uh, you know, uh, so I, I think it's how you reframe the issue and look at incentives and disincentives. Um, you know, part of the disincentives would be our taxation issue. Um, you know, are we appropriately taxing um, uh, the Gus Guzzlers dirtier engines and more appropriately taxing electric vehicles? I agree with right you. Now, it take, and that takes yeah. the burden off the tax incentive for solar and electric vehicles, and it, and it puts a disincentive on the other side, and you have to have both working, or at least you have, one, have to have one working. If you, if you want to do incentives for solar and electric vehicles, then do yeah. a huge, big distance center for fossil. I mean, we, we have a very modest distance center, the barrel tax. And the real problem yeah. with that is the money doesn't go to where it was supposed to go, which is really tragic. Right. And year after year, this is raised in the legislature. And year after year, they take the money away and they put it to something else. It's really tragic. Um, and I, right. I agree with and you on that. And I, and I feel that we have, to, we have to look out of the box on solar. Solar is only on tops of roofs. Why can't solar be on the tops of buses? Buses have a lot of geography, especially those, you know, twin buses, you know, two buses. Um, they could get a real, more than a trickle charge off just putting solar on top of the bus. Uh, we should have solar everywhere. We should have movable solar. Uh, we, you know, and guys like you, Mark, Marco, uh, with ProVision, you, you don't have to limit yourself to homes and roofs. You can, you can find efficient solar panels and maybe efficient batteries and combine them in a way that hasn't happened before. What do you think? Well, I think that I'd just like to ask uh, Mina kind of a cut to the chase political question, which is, Mina, do you believe that, uh, let's say, this next legislative session, that the legislature should put a bill or two in front of the governor's desk that will, uh, one bill which would provide state tax credit for residential battery storage? And two, another no. bill on the, the governor's desk, which should uh, incentivize through a state tax credit uh, those people to buy more electric vehicles. 
Mina? No, because, you know, we already know that the, the, the tax credit as it exists now includes um, storage. So, you know, it's a matter of designing your system right um, to take full advantage of the tax credit with um, PV plus storage. So the state is the state already allows that taxation already allows that um, in their interpretation of the tax credit. So I I think if we're looking at just a separate energy storage tax cre credit, that's a huge mistake. Okay. Mm. And and, and I think it's just and then and even the cars. I think the cars should be competitively priced. I mean, it, it's already competitively priced with the with the Nissan Leaf and, um, you know, the, the um, what, there's a Tesla version for, what, 30000 or something? Well, not I until mean, next year at the earliest. Not until next year at the earliest. That, yeah. And that's Elon like, Musk's no. plan to, to, to really uh, go, go to town marketing those. Uh, I think that's the, the purpose of his line of credit and all that. But, you know, don't, yeah. you, don't you guys I mean, feel that, you know, transportation has lagged? We, we've been talking, I include the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and the, part, the State Department of Transportation. We've been talking about um, multimodal transportation. We've been talking about electric vehicles. We've been talking about trying to you know, get the fossil fuels off the roads, but we haven't done really much at all uh, after five years plus of talking about it. And so if, you know, if I was king, um, I, you know, and I'm not running, by the way, if I was king, I would really throw some money at this. I would say, I'm going to change public conduct. All those guys who love the macho trucks, we're not going to let them do that anymore. We're going to, we're going to in incentivize them, force them um, to get on the road with electric vehicles or biofuel. We're not going to let them use fossil fuel. We're going to make it really hard for them. And in five years more, we could actually change it. But going at the rate we're going now in terms of changing public opinion and public buying habits, we're not doing very well. We have less than 3,000 electric vehicles in a state of a million vehicles. That's peanuts. Well, I, I think the whole challenge for the legislature is, you know, you're looking at entire system changes. Um, you know, whether you're talking about the fuel infrastructure, your, your transportation infrastructure, your electrical grid, um, your water system, um, in domestic use and ag use, um, and your communication system, you know, that's a five really big areas that need a total overhaul and r some really good long-term planning. I mean, you know, if you're looking at, oh, we need more electrical vehicles or we need another bike path, that's just a project. What we're talking about is whole systems changes that are happening that we're not keeping up with. And there's no long-term strategy um, um, to make those kinds of transformations. Well, amen to that. And now after, in, in the post-next uh, era era, uh, or maybe the post-next era era, um, you know, we, we should be able to think more creatively, get out of the box, uh, step off smartly, and get into more innovative systems. Um, what, what do you see going forward, Marco, about, about um, you know, marrying solar and batteries and cars. Would you as an entrepreneur, would you as the uh, principal of ProVision Solar try to roll up your sleeves on that? Well, I mean, that's clearly, from what I can tell, it's clearly what Elon Musk's strategy is in his desired purchase of the company of Solar City, which is owned essentially or majority controlled by his cousins, Peter and Lyndon Rive, is that he sees that synergy between electric vehicles and between uh, solar PV, and uh, we are, I guess, awaiting a, a shareholder approval vote, uh, which may or may not be taking place right now. I don't know if they had to have a super majority. I haven't looked at it in that detail, but I would think at least 50% of the shares plus one. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good combo. But again, Jay, I go back to this kind of existential question I've really been pondering recently, which is how important is profitability, and I'm not even talking about near-term profitability, but uh, uh, unprofitability or losing money for not one, not two, not five, but ten, ten years. I mean, what does that say about 
the product? What does it say about how the product is being sold, how the product is being priced? I mean, again, to, to look at the Solar City model, which I've been looking at in some detail, uh, analysts jump up and down with glee when they hear that Solar City has announced that they've reduced their costs again and again and again, and that they're the leader in terms of reducing the cost of installed PV systems. So I think to myself, how, how kind of... Alice in Wonderland through the looking glass is this, you know, prices going down and, and they lose more and more and more money. Well, yeah, but so, don't, don't you think, we're, we're in a new, we're in a frontier thing here. This is a transformation. And, uh, the, you know, they haven't worked out all the uh, technical details. They haven't made a product people are willing to pay more for. They're effectively incentivizing, you know, the whole movement themselves by taking, you know, less as a purchase price um, and then uh, eating the loss. Um, but, you know, over time, I, I think they believe that over time this will resolve. And certainly uh, Elon Musk's uh, view of the matter, uh, you know, where he puts his money where his mouth is, or at least he puts his Tesla's money where its mouth is, um, is that ultimately these guys are going to have a product that will be, you know, central uh, in the future of, um, of, of, of clean energy and, and transportation. Uh, I'm sure he's not telling us everything. He has some tricks up his sleeve about how he's going to put these things together. But, but clearly, over time, the technology gets better. Over time, people become more interested. Over time, that software makes it more useful, more interesting, more exciting for the market. And I think he's betting on that. So if he, if he were here today, Marco, he would disagree with you that because they haven't made money in 10 years means they're on the wrong track. I think it's a long plan, that's all. Mina, how do you well, feel? Well, I don't know. I'd like to hear Mina's view. What's your, what's your take on this, Mina? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a viewpoint yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I, that's okay. I, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the smartest thing of all. Well, Marco, let me let, me let you close, and you can rebut everything I've said. <laughs> Well, we live in bizarre times, Jay. I, and I'm looking, uh, uh, you know, in reference to uh, the biggest cult, the, the collapse of the biggest solar renewable company in the planet, Sun Edison, back in April. They're they're in the process of being parceled out, dismembered. They're never going to come back as they were. They were big. They were bold. They were breaking tr traditions, and and they collapsed in a supernova or exploded in a supernova fashion. And I mean, as long as companies like Elon Musk, Tesla, and others can, I guess, count on Deutsche Bank and others to pony up 100, 200, 300 million bucks at a clump, you know, they can keep, they can keep the automated assembly line uh, flowing along. But uh, I think we're, we're beginning to see uh, serious reaction from the market, as in from investors. When you look at the past month, okay, the past 30 or so days in terms of the stock price of both Tesla and Solar City. Solar City has dropped about 30% in the past 30 days. Tesla hasn't been as dramatic, but clearly, clearly investors in the market writ large have some misgivings about this combination of Tesla and Solar City. All right. Mina, you want to have last words on this? Yeah, I, I, I you know, I, I completely agree with uh, Marco on, you know, we have these um, huge um, companies that, you know, it's not only that the, the, the utilities have to change their business models, but these, these other companies, their business models aren't static either that they have to involve. So, um, you know, what does the future hold for them? Yeah, we're in a transformation. We're out of time, too. Mm -hmm. uh, Marco Mangelsdorf of ProVision Solar, Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC and uh, a consultant as uh, Energy Dynamics. Uh, thank you so much, you guys. I hope to see you again in two weeks from now here on Mina, Marco, and me on energy. Today we've been talking about Tesla setting a new standard for electric vehicles and much more. And we'll find something else to carry the conversation in two weeks. Thank you so much both. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>